The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant says water levels have dropped sharply in two areas at the crippled facility. This comes after officials discovered leaks over the weekend at four other locations at the plant. Tokyo Electric Power Company says workers discovered lower water levels inside two barriers surrounding storage tanks on Tuesday. Workers last carried out a check four days earlier. TEPCO officials say the water, water level inside one barrier has dropped 11 centimeters since Friday and 7 centimeters inside the other. They estimate that comes to about 225 tons of water. But the officials say there's nothing to suggest that the water leaked into the surrounding ground and they haven't noticed any changes in levels in the tanks. The officials say the water inside the barriers contains up to 440 becquerels per liter of radioactive strontium. That's 44 times the government limit. TEPCO officials plan to drain the area inside the barriers and find out what caused the levels to fall. They suspect the water may have seeped into the soil. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant are responding to the latest in a long line of problems. They're painting a protective coat on barriers around storage tanks to stop radioactive water leaking out. Tokyo Electric Power Company workers found water seeping from the barriers at four spots on the weekend. They say resin used to seal concrete seams had degraded at two places. The workers confirmed the leak stopped after they repaired the seals. Water was leaking from concrete cracks at the other locations. The workers suspect cold weather had caused the cracks to widen. The utility plans to apply a protective coating across the surface of about 20 barriers. TEPC officials say more than three tons of water seeped out in the latest leak. They say the level of radiation may have exceeded the government safety standard. But the officials say there is no way the water could have reached the sea because there are no drainage Thousands ditches. Thousands of workers go inside Japan's damaged nuclear plant every day, doing one of the most dangerous jobs on the planet. But few gets to see what they actually do. Teams continue the complicated task of removing fuel rods from one of the reactor buildings at Fukushima Daiichi. NHK Wall's Yoichiro Tateiwa put on a safety suit and followed them in to give us a closer look. Walkers in full protective gear have become one of the most recognizable symbols of the operation to the commission Fukushima Daiichi. This command and control center is where they come to put the gear on. We got to be careful with not letting the radioactive particle inside of the building. The purpose of this protective suit is to prevent radioactive particles from sticking to the skin. Once again, you have to... I also have to wear two layers of socks. Several... Then, with the triple layers of gloves, that's not the end of it. It's hard to move my fingers. The idea is, if you touch a contaminated object, you can immediately switch to another pair of gloves while keeping the inner layer firmly in place. The mask is strapped on very tightly to avoid inhaling contaminated air. It's kind of hard to breathe, so you have to get used to it. On my way to the reactor number four building, I saw damaged structures still untouched. There's more pressing work to do. Here, work is underway to remove spent fuel rods. Wheeling restrictive gear, walkers carry out delicate work that cannot fail. It's not easy to communicate, so they discuss every detail of the operation in advance. Even just watching from the side, I was hot, thirsty, and exhausted. Tetsuya Hayashi knows the struggle of working in the protective gear. He spent 50 days last year at Fukushima Daiichi. 
In places with high levels of radiation, the masks and suits we wore were sealed with tape. Even at this distance, it was impossible to hear each other without shouting. Hayashi said it limited the amount of work they could do. The mask wouldn't keep up with the pace of my breath. In just a few minutes, probably about five, I would start running out of oxygen. So I quickly understood I just couldn't operate at my normal pace. Around the plant, 3,500 workers like Hayashi work every day. They are involved in different tasks, including heavy construction work. Every time workers finish their shift, they are screened to make sure no radioactive particles are stuck to them. From the tips of their fingers to the soles of their feet, they also have to periodically check their internal exposure to radiation. They sit in what's called a whole body counter. For visitors like me, it is also mandatory. If contamination is detected, you can't leave until properly cleaned. So there's here no problem with internal radiation exposure. So I can go home. The workers have a massive job on their hands. The success of the commissioning process rests on their shoulders. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World, in Fukushima. Radioactive waste from decontaminated areas near the Fukushima power plant is proving difficult. Local officials are reluctant to store it in their town. Japan's Environment Ministry will drop a plan by next summer to move the waste to intermediate sites. Waste generated by decontamination work has been stored in about 460 temporary sites around the plant. Officials plan to build intermediate facilities in three towns near the plant. The facilities are designed to store contaminated soil and other waste until a decision is made on the final disposal sites. Earlier this month, officials asked communities to host the facilities. Experts are calling for more transparency to win the public's understanding. They'll discuss how to transport the waste, protect residents from exposure, and avoid traffic congestion. We have to complete the transport within a few years. Otherwise, it will be a barrier for reconstruction. Environment Ministry officials estimate that up to 28 million cubic meters of contaminated waste needs to be moved. Contamination workers have spent the last few months trying to clean up some of the most contaminated areas of Fukushima Prefecture. And the government survey suggests they're getting the results. Radiation levels have dropped by more than half. The Environment Ministry ordered trial work in towns designated as unsuitable for living. Radiation levels were more than 50 millisieverts per year. Officials considered most of Namie and Futaba too contaminated for a fast solution, so they had not begun full-scale decontamination work there. Tests after the trial show the average radiation levels in parts of Namie town ranged from 3.51 to 6.56 microsieverts per hour. That's less than half the figure before the decontamination work. The radiation levels at a former kindergarten in Futaba fell by nearly 70 percent. Government officials say the radiation still exceeds safety standards, but the levels in some parts satisfy the criteria for easing the evacuation zone restrictions. Tens of thousands of people have had to stay away from their homes near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant for nearly three years. But some of them have been allowed to spend their Christmas and New Year holidays in areas where radiation levels are relatively low. Government officials say people from six municipalities in evacuation zones near the plant can stay at their homes until January 7th. Residents are usually only allowed to visit during the daytime. Yoshiyuki Sugi and his wife return home with holiday decorations. The couple currently live in temporary accommodation. They visit their home once a week, 
but this is the first time they have spent the night at their house since the disaster in March 2011. I'm really happy to be home, but I wish we could return for good soon. But Sugi says he's worried about radiation as the decontamination work around his home has not been completed. Environment officials say about 1,700 people have sought permission to make the temporary visits. But in the area where the Sugi family used to live, less than 10% of the residents are returning for the holidays. have made a comeback in northeastern Japan's Iwate Prefecture. The March 11th tsunami severely damaged the local Ayu fishery. The fish were raised in a hatchery in the city of Ofunato. The tsunami washed away much of the hatchery, but it resumed operations in September. About 300,000 sweet fish fry were moved on Tuesday from a large tank in the hatchery to a truck truck took the three-month-old fish to the inland city of Ninohe. Production is still on a trial basis, so shipments from the hatchery are expected to be between a third and a half the level before the disaster. We will keep up efforts to restore shipments to pre-disaster levels. The sweet fish fry will be kept in Ninohe until May when they'll be released into a nearby river. This hour, some of the stars of an aquarium on the Sea of Japan coast have been getting into the holiday spirit. <laughs> Penguins at the Notojima Aquarium in Ishikawa Prefecture dressed up as helpers for Santa Claus. They waddled past the crowds on their way from a pool to a square. They take the walk three times a day at this time of year. The penguins with those costumes were so cute. Visitors to the aquarium can also stroke seals that are dressed up for the holidays. The facility's annual Christmas event runs until Wednesday.